Hi, I'm Ty Justice. The animated theatrical short Cat Tales for Two, released in 1953, directed by Charles McKimson for Warner Brothers, was the very first appearance of the legendary Speedy Gonzales, though he looked a little different during his debut. Senor Speedy Gonzales, the fastest mouse in all Mexico. Adios, senors. Even for the 1950s, his look was offensive to Mexican people with the thick, greasy, forward-swept mop and buck teeth, one of them even being gold. Some might even say he was a little racist. Thankfully, by his second appearance in 1955 self-titled Speedy Gonzales, the fast-footed mouse made the rounds in what seemed like a quiet rebranding of the character, with the established likes of Sylvester the Cat brought along as the villain and foil of the fastest mouse in all of Mexico. The main voice talent in this short was, of course, the man of a thousand voices himself, Mel Blanc, as the titular mouse and character George. Though Stan Freeberg voiced the other character, Benny, he, like many other voice actors at Warner Brothers who worked with Blank, went uncredited. This was because Blank worked it into his new contract that he and he alone be given screen credit, novel then for actors in cartoons. After studio executive Leon Schlesinger, known for being cheap, even for a producer, denied Blank a raise, he accepted Blank's secondary demand in exchange for sole credit since it cost the studio nothing. George? Yes, George. Come here. Bend down. Why did you hit yourself on the head for, George? I like it. I like it. I like those fellows. All the time having fun. It took decades for proper credit to be restored to the other voice talents who worked alongside Blank, like Freeberg and June Foray. Though this is definitely an insensitive portrayal of a Latin character, it was still much better than other animated racial depictions of minorities then and even a few years before. This very well could have had to do with Hollywood's love affair and depiction of the Latin lover and spitfire since the silent era. Giving Speedy a slightly less offensive rendition gave him a career as one of Warner Brothers' most lasting creations. But this begs the question, were the artists drawing characters like Speedy racist? I mean, maybe, but more than likely not. Well, Universal Scrub Me Baby was pretty bad, but I do know that there were renditions of famous black performers that were satirized with respect, like popular band leader Cab Calloway. King of sweet death, he gave her things that she was needing. I think it's pretty clear how an animator felt about the subject he was characterizing. It's easy to tell homage from spite. Though it's a deeper conversation since a single animator is not an island and really isn't in control of the whole product. I love those fellows. They're so silly. McKimson was also a great choice for Speedy's debut, having directed shorts of all the major WB characters and even honing Bugs' now ubiquitous look. Cat Tales for Two was animated by Herman Cohen, Phil DeLara, Charles McKimson, the director's brother, of course, Rod Scribner, along with Keith Darling and Harry Love, both uncredited until now. <laughs> the short itself was innovative, though Hispanic culture did get a little dinged in the process. Hey, Benny, you like Mexican food? Oh, yes, I do, George. It gives me the heartburn, and I love it. Well, that's a Mexican ship, and there's bound to be Mexican mouses on board. Oh, boy, senoritas! I love those senoritas! Speedy Gonzalez's debut marked an important era for Warner Brothers, but in our modern era, sometimes cherished relics of the past are a hard sell. 
even if the community being satirized mostly comes to accept the character. This particular short didn't even see a mass release digitally until the fourth volume of the Looney Tunes Golden Collection DVDs, despite being Speedy's debut, helmed by a top-tier director. It also doesn't seem to be getting any better, evidenced by Warner Brothers' sudden refusal to show two somewhat newly remastered Tom and Jerry shorts deemed at the 11th hour to be too offensive for release on disc. This led directly to a fan backlash and the pulling of the second Blu-ray volume release for the original MGM cat and mouse duo. But more on that later. Not all of our heroes start out as they end up, even animated ones, and Speedy's no different. But thanks to a little tinkering, his history, warts and all, have become part of what makes him beloved. Ignoring or even erasing that character's history would be worse than denying it happened in the first place. Warner Brothers used to believe in that, even stating it on their releases, and I hope they do again someday. I'm Ty Justice, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.